Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Uh, another fireside chat here with uh, me, Zach the Grow Guy. And uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, powdery mildew uh, prevention and, uh, you know, curative things that we can do if uh, it does find its way into the garden and uh, basically, you know, how to address it and how to stay ahead of it. Um, so, Powdery mildew is a, a thing that a lot of, uh, you know, indoor and outdoor and greenhouse growers will experience. Uh, it is one of those things that can kind of almost pop up overnight. And uh, the longer you leave it unchecked, the worse the damage can actually become. And so we're going to basically kind of go over how to scout for it what to do as preventative and curative and uh, you know basically the ways to uh, remediate a situation where you may have you know powdery mildew outbreak that has occurred um, first and foremost it is something <laughs> sorry guys it is something that can be uh, gotten rid of um, you know if we think about traditional agriculture in terms of cucumber or tomato growers they also have crops that are susceptible to powdery mildew and if they have an outbreak, they can't necessarily just cut everything down and start over. So what that tells you guys is that you can definitely, you know, get rid of it uh, with the proper rotation of products and, you know, come out on top. Um, so basically, the way that I like to kind of uh, treat for powdery mildew, even before you may have it, is uh, a rotation of uh, our products Xeritol and Oxyfos. And uh, the reason that you want to basically use those two together is uh, the peroxyacetic acid component of Xeritol is going to allow you to have a higher level of sanitation than the Oxyfos would on its own. And uh, the Oxyfos containing uh, peroxide as well as that mono and dipotassium salt of phosphoric acid allows you to kind of do two, uh, two things at once by sanitizing that mycelium in the canopy while eliciting uh, something called an induced systemic response. And uh, what's really clutch about the ISR response that is elicited through the Oxyfos, guys, is that it's a 21-day period of time. And so what you would end up doing is mixing Xeritol and Oxyfos together at a 1 to 300 rate on each, which equates out to about 13 milliliters. And then uh, what you guys want to do is basically, you know, treat your mother plants before you take your clones, treat your veg plants, hit them when you flip, week three, week six, assuming that you guys are running a nine week cycle, that will, you know, basically take you from propagation all the way to harvest in terms of that induced systemic response, which is just heightening your plant's ability to fight off certain, you know, fungal pathogens, disease, and bacteria that it could encounter. And especially in the case of powdery mildew, it's going to allow the plant to mitigate or, uh, you know, uh, keep any hyphae from being able to take hold. And uh, if we... Uh, look at how powdery mildew functions, guys. It's it's a little spore that, you know, it's floating around and then it lands on your leaf tissue. And then what happens is it puts something into the leaf tissue almost like a root. And uh, that's called a hyphae. And what happens is once that hyphae is put into that cellular tissue, you need to use something like Oxyfos uh, or, you know, something like Regalia or, you know, some of these products that basically allow the plant to use its own defense system to mitigate said hyphae. Because if we only treat the surface of the leaf tissue, that hyphae is going to continue to exist. And, you know, just like a weed, like a dandelion, if you cut a dandelion off at ground level, but you leave the, you know, root zone intact, each time that dandelion comes back, it's going to be a little bit more established, a little bit more voracious. And that's because that, you know, quote unquote, root zone has been allowed to expand. Powdery mildew is very similar in terms of if it is, you know, present in the cellular tissue with that hyphal, uh, you know, uh, protrusion, then uh, the hyphae will continue to propagate and your infection in terms of the actual visible, you know, powdery mildew is going to get much worse. And so that oxyfos allows you to basically allow the plant to take care of that hyphae so that it's not something that keeps coming back. Um, the other option for growers is to basically remove the affected tissue, but in some situations you, you can't take the entire plant off the stock because then you're not going to have anything left to grow. So that Oxyfos option is uh, you know very important for cannabis growers. Um, there's nothing in it that would ever make a grower fail any type of testing because, again, it is potassium phosphite 
or mono and dipotassium salts of phosphoric acid. And literally, it's just a PK molecule that the plant can't regulate the uptake on. And so that's what elicits that response that allows the plant to use its own defense system to battle off those pathogens. Um, you know, there are some strains that are susceptible to powdery mildew more than others. Uh, I've found things that are high in like lemonine and pinene uh, in terms of terp profiles seem to be less susceptible to it. And I think that probably has something to do with the antiseptic quality of those terpenes being able to, you know, naturally fight off things like mold and mildew. Um, the fruitier strains seem to, uh, you know, be more susceptible to it. Um, you know, it is an environmentally uh, exacerbated issue. So if you're, uh, you know, in a warehouse in an area like Colorado, chances are you're going to see PM flare up in the fall and the winter where we have very cold nights. And, you know, it's like the glass of ice water on a hot day when that condensation occurs and we increase that relative humidity. Um, that's when you're really going to see the, uh, you know, powdery mildew start to germinate, so to speak. It's, it's those big swings that really allow it to get going in terms of, you know, very humid, not humid, and then hot and cold. It's almost like cold snapping a, a you know, tomato seed or something like that. It, it really gives those spores the environmental condition to uh, be able to propagate and do their thing. Uh, diesel uh, VW22 is saying, what's the name of the product? Uh, to be able to mitigate powdery mildew, man, I, I, like I said, I recommend a, a mixture of our Oxyfos and Xeritol together at a 1 to 300 on a 21-day interval. With the uh, utilization of Xeritol at a 1 to 250 for spot treatments during that uh, time period, like, you know, let's say you've got a corner in the back of the room where the airflow isn't necessarily as good as it could be and, you know, that plant is always a little bit more susceptible during that 21 day period, it is acceptable diesel to go in there and spray Xeritol as a spot treatment on that area. But I would not recommend using the Oxyfos again. Uh, you know, that 21 day residual is a stress response. And so more is not necessarily better with that product. If you stress out a plant more uh, than it needs to be to elicit the response in a positive manner, then you can actually cause undue stress, which is going to basically make your, you know, approach counterproductive at that point. Uh, so, you know, adhere to the 21 day interval with the Oxyfos, but the Xeritol can be used as needed at that one to 250. Um, again, though, environment plays a huge uh, role in powdery mildew. And so, you know, defoliation, guys, is a key component into making sure that if you've had it, it doesn't keep coming back because airflow and desiccation is going to basically allow you to mitigate any of, uh, you know, those residual spores that could be in the garden that find their way in. Um, it likes humidity. It likes stagnation. So the more airflow you can get into the environment, the more you are going to basically see this pathogen, you know, kind of fleet and be easier to get rid of. Um, once you guys have sanitized, though, something, you know, like Xeritol being employed, uh, it's not a bad idea if your environment is less than preferable to follow up with an inhibitor like uh, citric acid or sodium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate. There are other products, uh, you know, bacillus, for example, um, that once you've cleaned the slate, you can put down, you know, an inhibitor and prolong that uh, period from when you're going to have to do your next spray. Because once you're able to, uh, you know, clean the slate, so to speak, you're going to have an exponentially longer period of time where something like an inhibitor can play to your benefit and allow you to go, you know, as much as 50% longer to, you know, your next subsequent spray because of the fact that you've sanitized and now that inhibition quality from like your citric acid or your bicarbonate is coming into play and, uh, you know, keeping something from getting back in there and, uh, you know, repropagating and doing its thing. Uh, Clint mentioned uh, gliocaladium. Uh, Biosafe had a product called PVent. That was very effective for powdery mildew. The coolest thing about PVENT, guys, is it worked through hyperparasitism. And so if you already had powdery mildew, the gliocaladium would adhere to those active living you know, spores and hyphae and actually work off of them and use them as a food source until they were starved out. 
and then they would basically uh, be able to colonize the plant uh, on top of that for up to a 21 day period. So it was something that, uh, you know, a lot of growers would do like zero tall oxyphos on Monday and then like pvent on Tuesday and then have, you know, two weeks where they wouldn't have to treat for said issues. Um, but hopefully, you know, guys, PVent will be back relatively soon. Um, we are working on it, and I was told late July unofficially. So fingers crossed, you know, late July we'll, we'll have access to that gliocaladium again. Um, it is a very good tool for growers that, you know, may have a less than preferable environment or just dealing with, like, what's going on here in Colorado today. It's rainy and cold. Um, you know, if you had stuff in a hoop house, this is one of those situations where you might see powdery mildew tomorrow morning because we had a lot of heat. Now it's cold. It's moist. You know, that cold snap of the spore or the seed rather, seed rather spore. You get what I'm saying? Basically, this is the type of environment that's conducive to its type of growth. So if it was me and I had a hoop house, I would probably go spray Xerotol today just as a preventative to make sure that if there was any, you know, environmental situations that could dictate growth, you're, you're staying ahead of the situation. Um, one of the best things that, again, you guys can do is airflow. Uh, there is a awesome company called Vosterman that makes a product called a V-Flow fan that uh, it basically does a process called destratification, guys. And what it does is, if we think of it almost like a fountain, it takes the air from the floor and circulates it back down uh, almost like a fountain. If you go on YouTube, they have a really cool video uh, of it working and uh, for powdery mildew, being able to equalize your environment and have the same relative humidity at the ceiling as at the floor and the temperature to be consistent, you're going to see much less instance of things like you know powdery mildew breaking out as well as botrytis because those environmental swings are you know what are going to kind of shock the plant and allow those spores to become more viable than they normally would be. Uh, and Hale is saying, how about your new BT Now for outdoor? Uh, and it, Tony, uh, BT Now is the BTK, the Kirstaki, and uh, basically antifeedant. You put it on your plants, the caterpillars ingest the BTK crystals, and it creates a uh, protease enzyme that basically it's a stop feeding action and how it shuts down the caterpillar's digestive system. And so even though you may not see you know, dead caterpillars on day one, you're going to see the, you know, damage to your canopy go from maximum to minimal. And, you know, within three to five days, you're going to be stepping over dead caterpillar bodies. It's uh, a very good tool for, you know, later on, once your stuff starts to get set, because if you see corn earworm, chances are you're going to see botrytis as well. So because it is a later flower application, make sure that you do a pre-harvest spray with Xeritol. Uh, to be able to mitigate any residual, you know, active spore that could be present and, uh, you know, also address any of that botrytis that could be there. Uh, mix it with a non-ionic like cocoa wet or natural wet for your best results. Uh, the V-Flow fan, thanks ACW for, uh, you know, answering that question there. The, the V-Flows are, uh, they're clutch guys. Vosterman makes a bunch of really good products. And uh, if you look on some of the really large, you know, grows that are on IG now, um, that you see a lot of V-Flows up there. Uh, the literature is on the website for the most part, uh, just growing broke, but uh, you can always hit up myself or Max or Biosafe Systems directly uh, in the DM if you have any specific questions, and uh, we'll definitely get them answered and point you in the right direction. Uh, Grow Bro, it, it's called BT Now. Uh, it's a Bacillus thuringiensis Kirstaki, and uh, you know there's a, like the BTI, the Bacillus thuringiensis Israelis that people use for like you know. Uh, Larva, like mosquitoes, uh, used to use it for root aphids and things like that. This BTK subspecies is for caterpillars, but it's just as effective. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for me today? I, uh, I hope that you all have a great Friday. I'm, I'm sorry I'm in a, a bunch of pain. I ended up breaking my wrist last week and uh, still waiting on surgery. Uh, will BT now work for gnats? Uh, BTK will... Uh, be more for lepidopterous and caterpillar type insects. Uh, for gnats growing broke, you're going to want to look at something like Natural or Microblift BMC. Uh, ACW Supply that was on the feed earlier, they, they could probably supply you with either of those. Uh, the the Zero Tall uh, will get rid of the gnats food source. BioSeries is a great option uh, as well. 
for gnats, but if you're looking for a, a Bacillus thuringiensis type species, the the natural or the BMC would be what I would recommend in conjunction with something like BioSeries. Well, guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful Friday. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And, uh, you know, thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Uh, happy Friday. Um, like I said last week, if uh, you're a customer of ours and you want to throw me a lid to, you know, basically give you guys a shout out during the, the firesides, let me know and we'll coordinate that. Uh, working on t-shirts and hats for all of you guys. Team BioSafe is coming. Uh, I just got to keep, uh, you know, poking the bear, so to speak, till it happens. But can't wait till, uh, you know, we can all post our Team BioSafe shirts together. That's going to be cool. I uh, appreciate all you guys, and uh, as always, if you have any questions, hit the DM, and uh, we'll talk then. And I hope you all are safe, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.